In this lecture, we will see the method of Euler to solve ordinary differential equations. This method is also known as Euler-Cauchy method or point slope method. The name itself suggests that we are going to deal with slope. Uh, let's start to understand this method in a very easy way. For example, if you are given an initial point x0 and with some step size edge, the other point is x1. For the sake of simplicity, I assume that this is our end point or terminal point and this is our starting point. Starting point is also treated as initial approximation. So, here x0 or x0 is there and corresponding y value will also be given to us. This duo is also known as initial approximation. So, y0 is basically y evaluated at x0. So, this height is y0 and this distance is x0. Fine? Okay. The next stage is we are going to draw a tangent at this particular point. This point is known as x0, y0. So, uh, let me show you here as well that uh, this is the point of interest and this is x0, y0 point. Fine? So, basically, we are going to draw the tangent at this particular point. Now, once we draw the tangent, it will make some angle theta. And once this theta is there, we can always discuss the slope that is dy by dx. Next thing is, now how do we find the actual value of dy by dx? Okay come back to here in this figure. Basically, the corresponding point of x1 will be somewhere here and that will be denoted by y1. Now, there are two cases. If y1 is your actual point, then it should lie here, which is the predicted one. And if it is not here, then the actual position will be different from the predicted one. So, obviously, y1 will be somewhere here. Fine. So, this predicted is nothing but the value which comes from directly joining this tangent to this one or stretching the tangent up to this point. Okay. Next thing is, once we are clear that we have drawn the tangent and uh, we have got some corresponding value to this x1, then we can always find or discuss this case. Now, what is this? So, uh, for the sake of simplicity, I have assumed that the distance y0 is same as here and that distance is denoted by q. I mean, q is the point with the same height y0, right? Okay. So, next is this one. So, this predicted point, I will call this as p and this new point which is having the same height y0 is q, okay? So, for this PQ, uh, I will have some distance. If uh, this distance is there, then I can always find this tan theta. The tan theta is nothing but PQ upon H, where PQ is nothing but this uh, the length of the opposite side and this is the length of the adjacent side. Okay? So, PQ by H. This H is nothing but the length of this one. So, in a simple way, tan theta is nothing but pq by h. Okay? And we will call this as our first approximation made by the tangent to the given curve. Right? So, basically we are not reaching towards the point, but we have stretched down here one tangent and then we will try to find the relation on the basis of this tangent. Okay? So, this pq from this if you simplify, uh, if, if you simply make pq as subject, then pq is equal to h into tan theta that is h into dy by dx. So, I have written here pq is equal to h into dy by dx. Right? Now, this pq is nothing but some error or maybe uh, I mean it is related with some error. So, uh, I am just having the refined result here that is my y1 which is equal to y0 plus pq. Okay? So, pq is added to the initial approximation 
to find the refined result that is y1 in other words i uh, now just see here in this figure in other words y1 is equal to y0 plus h into f evaluated at x0 y0 okay so what is this basically it is nothing but um, uh, you can see here it the new value can be obtained by addition of old value plus step size into slope so basically it is nothing but this one pq is equal to h into dy by dx this was the uh, approximation to y1 so if uh, you you take this difference y1 that means consider this distance pq uh, and this y0 so basically if y1 is the full value then y1 is nothing but pq plus y0 so p and q is this one and plus y0 is this one so if my predictor value is same as the true value then this whole distance up to this one will be my y1 and for this y1 i will have y0 plus pq fine so i hope you have got an idea that how we arrive up to this formula let me again repeat uh, for the sake of simplicity just see that this is y0 and remaining distance is something that we don't know right now okay but if your predicted value is same as your true value or the actual value then this distance will be y1 fine and this distance y1 is nothing but you add these two distances pq and y0 so that is what i am writing here y1 equal to y0 plus pq but what is pq basically this can be found out on the basis of this tangent so i have written tan theta which is equal to pq upon h now i am knowing this h so i can use that h here and hence pq is nothing but h times dy by dx so in this way this unknown entity pq can be written fine basic trigonometry that we are going to use here now what is the gist of this method the slope at the beginning of the interval is taken as an average slope over the whole interval okay consider a first order ordinary differential equation with initial condition given by this one now you can see here dy by dx equal to f of xy y at x not equal to y not consider this as equation number 1 you can see here that i have marked this as first order ordinary differential equation and this another one is nothing but initial condition or initial approximation fine so basically what you need to remember here is you will be given some first order ordinary differential equation along with some initial condition or approximation let us see here in simple language we are approximating a curve by slopes gradually Uh, the figure might be complicated if i am taking into account all the slopes or all the approximations and hence i had focused only on one slope but if you have understood this one slope then you can think of that instead of this y1 now if i am going to uh, have a jump from y1 to y2 then there will be another tangent at y1 that y1 will give me the next approximation that is y2 and if the next approximation is same as the actual one i will stop there but if it is not there there will be some difference and hence i will have a new formula y2 is equal to y y1 plus h times uh, dy by dx that is uh, f of uh, x1 y1 that is evaluated at x1 y1 right so as we increase the number of sub intervals by decreasing obviously the step uh, step size we can approximate the actual solution more efficiently in short as you increase the number of sub intervals you will have a refined result obviously y0 to y1 is uh, you, you can see in the previous figure that it is uh, having uh, i mean likely a curved shape but if you are having the minute distance the h is very small then you might have y0 here and y1 here fine and then y1 to y2 then y2 to y3 y3 to y4 and so on so you can just go here in this way and suppose this is yn then for uh, from starting from it uh, from y0 you will have small 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 variation here based upon tangents drawn here at each and every point right 
So this first tangent, this is second tangent, this is third tangent and this is fourth tangent and so on. So continuously you are uh, trying to draw the tangents at different points and hence you are basically approximating the curve on the basis of tangents. This is the power of Euler's method. Okay. Now other way around, you can even understand this formula on the basis of normal Taylor series expansion. So uh, for example here, uh, let me write here this one y at x naught plus h. Now see, basically this uh, y at x naught plus h is equal to y at x naught plus h then dy by dx evaluated at x naught y naught and plus higher order terms. If you recall, this is nothing but a Taylor series expansion. This is my fxy as given in the statement. So basically if you neglect the higher order terms here, then you will have the same kind of expression which is given by Euler. So in this way, it is nothing but uh, you can see here y1 is equal to y naught plus h into dy by dx, fine. So in this way, we will approach. Now let's see that how to implement this on the basis of a uh, few steps for solving certain problems. So before we dwell into problems, let's start with the algorithm. Step number one, you will be given a differential equation y dash is equal to dy by dx, which is equal to fxy with the initial condition y at x not equal to y not. This is called initial approximation as well. We will choose moderate step size h to divide x not and xn into equal sub interval. So whatever the interval you are given, you will try to minimize the step size in such a way that you will get maximum equal number of sub intervals to get the desired accurate result. Fine. This is step number one. In step number two, basically there are various books and authors, they are following different methods. But the quickest way is if you consider a calculation table like this one, x, y is equal, uh, uh, say for example, you are given this differential equation and then you are just writing in the table x, then y, then dy by dx and then <coughs> this formula old y plus h into dy by dx equal to new y. So I will write here x value, then corresponding y value will be given uh, in the statement based upon these two and even from the statement you have readily available this fxy. So these three values are available for me. I'm just using these three values in order to get new y. So I'll be using y naught, I'll be using dy by dx that is fxy evaluated at x0, y0 and I will be using step size which I have already chosen in step number 1. Okay, And then I will get y1. Just continue this process till the desired accuracy is reached. Let us see this problem. In order to foster this concept, using Euler's method, find an approximate value of y corresponding to x equal to 1 given that dy by dx equal to x plus y and y is equal to 1 when x equal to 0. Now see, basically you are given this one, this is fxy and this is y is equal to 1 when x equal to 0, is, this is nothing but an initial condition and this is your terminal point x equal to 1. So basically you will start with x equal to 0 and you will end up with x equal to 1. You need to choose here h in such a way that you will have good number of sub intervals and then you will find the uh, respective value of y. Okay, so let's proceed for this. Uh, we will consider here h to be 0.1, which is nothing but a considerably small value. Obviously, uh, I mean the larger number of sub intervals will lead to uh, the smaller value of this h. So in, in fact, you can even consider higher values if you are dealing with computers. Okay, so here in this case, we will have total n is equal to 10 sub intervals by considering 0.1 step size. Let us create a table x, y, fxy, 
then y i plus 1 is equal to y i plus h times f of x i y i. Basically, I have just written the iteration formula. Okay. So, we will consider here a step by step process. So, the first one initially x equal to 0 is given in the statement. So, I am writing here x equal to 0 and corresponding y equal to 1 is also there in the statement. So, I am writing 1. Now, f x y is x plus y. Now, what is x? That x is 0. What is y? It is 1. So, 0 plus 1 is 1. So, this I have obtained evaluated at 0 at x equal to 0 and y equal to 1. Fine. So, uh, now using these three values, what I will get? I will get y1, y1 is equal to 1 plus 0.1, that 0 0.1 is nothing but step size that is h. So, 0 0.1 times f evaluated at this one x0 comma y0. So, x0 is 0, y0 is 1. So, basically uh, fxy that is 1. So, I am just obtaining 1 plus 0 0.1 into 1 which is equal to 1.1. So, this is my first approximation. You can say this is our first approximation. Okay. Next is now just increase the uh, number, I mean one step size. So, 0 plus 0 0.1 that is 0 0.1 and based upon this what you will get here? What was your first approximation that you, you, you just carried out here that you have to write here. So, I am writing here that y1. Okay. So, let me write here this is my x0, this is my y0 and uh, this is my x1 and this is y1 and using this one I can write here 1.1 plus 0.1 that is 1.2. So, this is my f x1 comma y1 right now y2 is nothing but 1.1 that is this one y1 plus step size h into f x1 y1 that is 1.1 1.2 just we have obtained here so i am writing here 1.2 and finally i will get the second approximation okay so this is my second approximation right in this way just carry forward your table and our in our question it was asked to reach up to this one. So, this is my basically 10th approximation and y 10 corresponding value is 3.18. I will stop here because the remaining procedure is used in obtaining y 11 which is not asked here. Okay. So, finally, I have got the answer y equal to 3.18 which is the required approximation. Fine. So, in this way we can apply the knowledge of Euler's method. For your self study, I am just posing one problem here. You are given dy by dx equal to y plus x upon y minus x and initial condition is y equal to 1 at x equal to 0. You have to find y for x equal to 0 0.1. Keep in mind that you are given very minute value. So, this is your end point and this is your starting point. Now, you have to apply your knowledge of Euler's method and find the answer. Your answer will be nearly 1.0928. So, in this way, you can apply the knowledge of Euler's method in solving the ordinary differential equations of first order. There are other methods as well, but this is one of those methods which are basically understood that we are going to apply the knowledge of uh, uh, the uh, slope of the equation okay and hence this is met this method is also known as point slope method i hope this video will lead to a proper understanding of euler's method and its applications thank you